Mangus. My name Mike Mangus. Hey, how you doing? Face to the name, Michael Mangus. Enough of that. <laughs> All right, this is the, uh, the Mississippi trip. Uh, today is uh, what? Today is September, September. The Teat Boys. Um, here are some of the guys that are out here. You notice my boat is not there. We're getting it into the water. Unfortunately, it's such a, uh, it was a mass partner, it, it's done. I wouldn't have been able to sail. So instead, I just basically strapped it to a trailer and hit you right with Pat Johnson over there in his little boat. Man, that thing's awesome. So that, that cabin, I mean, you got shade, it breaks a little spray, it's amazing. Uh, anyway, Deep Boys, this is our first stop. Uh, this is only like nine miles from start. This is an easy sail, other than it's a bit choppy out in the bay. Or but if you can make it through that chop, then you end up here, which is a nice little cove. It's flat. You got fish. I've already I've picked up a couple shells just walking in from the boat the first time around. It's really nice shells. I'm going to be walking around this place and give you guys an idea uh, what it's like. Uh, you see, it's much like Sand Island over in Florida. Uh, kind of got internal uh, lagoons here. I'm going to try to make it around that way, you know. I think I noticed the shipwreck out on the sh southern shore, or northern shore, that I want to check out. Anyway, I'll get some more uh, video here shortly, so hang on. On the northwest side of Petit Boise, whatever name of the place is. This is another little cove, not as nice as the one we're at on the west side, but this is another nice little cove that if the wind ever shifts south, um, anywhere south, then this could be a, a possible place that we could stop and be sheltered from the water. See, it's relatively smooth, even out to quite a bit because we got a bit of shallow land right there. Okay, um, you know, earlier I was mistaken. I thought we were on Petit Boise Island. Uh, that's incorrect. That is Petit Island over there. This is like a little sand island. It probably has a name and I'll look it up later, a little bit later on. Uh, to the west of Petit Island. Got a big old shrimp boat coming out. He's got his booms out, probably dragging nets, 
And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he comes out right between in shipping channel, right between these two islands. Speaking about shipping, you see a few uh, oil rigs out there, out on the horizon. In fact, uh, we use one of them to help guide us to this spot. Most convenient. See off in the horizon there, I don't know if it's going to show up on this camera, is another shrimp boat with his booms all the way out too. Just to the uh, the right of the one closer one here that you see coming in. Anyway, I'm going to keep on walking. I don't know if it's going to show up. I believe that is... That might be the shipyard. No, no, no. That's not the shipyard. That, oh, heck, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's the shipyard. <laughs> That's where we started from. Anyway, I'm going to keep walking. Alright. I am standing on most likely the highest point of this little island. I met Pat. In fact, uh, again, I don't know if it's going to show up in this, but just see the guy in the white shirt way down there on the beach. You look, uh, you look, you can just see him walking. I'm going to pan the North Shore. just a great big high sand plateau up from the beach, probably about 10 or 15 feet up. It's been interesting, I'm going to try to get down there also. This is the south shore. I don't know what happened to it, but I saw a raccoon. Uh, I already knew there was some here. I saw raccoon tracks, quite right, quite recognizable. Uh, especially with the amount of time I spent hunting them when I was a teenager. So there's raccoons on the side. And I actually saw one. It came up over that mountain right there. No idea where he went. He disappeared anywhere. I have a burrow or something nearby. Yeah, I'm going to keep on walking and checking this place out. Again, we are probably on the north shore, or close to it, or excuse me, south shore, <laughs> south, uh, southeast shore, on top of the sand plateau. I mean, this thing is huge. It's, it, it, there is no, like, very little, actually, free sand. When I say free sand, sand that doesn't have anything in it. The wind has scoured and exposed shells and all these little, all this bumpiness, all this texture, all this is shells and you know just worn away, cracked, broken. You can see some of the shells here, I mean it's all over the place. This is what's holding the sand here. A little bit of free sand there, but that's being held in by a little bit of vegetation. And slowly but surely, the waves are wearing away at the edge here. And I'll get a video here and walk down there. It's a pretty steep drop, or at least a grade. There's the other shrimping boat that was way back on the horizon on an earlier video. Uh, notice they don't have their nets out. They got the booms out, but no nets. So imagine they're waiting to put those things out when they get out into the Gulf. And of course, that's the deep boys. The or ever pronounce it island with the moon above it.
I had to get this crocodile. I knew I've seen tracks, three-toed tracks with something dragging a tail, and that is it. That's a crocodile. Or alligator or whichever one. I can't remember which one was fresh or salt water. He's in the lagoon in the middle of this place. And a pretty good place to be, really. It's got a tidal flow. Not much. You can see there's a cut right over there. Tide only fluctuates about yeah, 8, 18 inches here. So I imagine there's a pretty good inflow and exflow. And there's a little cut over there too. Storm surge might give it a little bit more, of course. Oh, our alligator just dived. <laughs> see if I can get closer and see if we can see him underneath the water. This, uh, this lagoon looks actually pretty deep. Looks like it falls off pretty quick. And wherever he went, looks like he went deep, at least down in the murky water. And this, uh, this looks deep. Oh well. Yeah, here's the, uh, the flow in and out of the, the main lagoon. See, you got fish just jumping around inside of it. The birds, this is, this is what keeps the interior of this place alive. Between birds, fish, the raccoon, of course alligators. <laughs> I'm really curious at how deep this is in, although I'm not gonna go testing it, sorry. Alligators do not excite me. Well, not enough to make me go in the water. We've been around the island, and here's our happy little group. I haven't checked the time. It's probably 5, maybe 6. Could be around 6 p.m. Oh, no. That's too early. Late. Nah, it's probably only around 5. Uh, I'll be sleeping on the beach tonight. Since without my boat, I didn't bring any tents or anything else, because I never intended to sleep on the beach. But that's fine. I'm supposed to be... Uh, I'm like mid to high 60s tonight. Figure with a shirt and uh, my jacket on, I'll be no problems. So we'll find out. Anyway, I'll get another recording here probably when the sun sets and we get those glorious sunsets that everybody always posts up on Facebook. So we'll catch you then. Six o'clock. Night. <laughs> ah, we're good. There's only like two names I know out of this entire bunch. Give <laughs> me <Every> chance.
for some reason this rock is sitting out here pretty much in the middle of the island all by its lonesome <laughs> who knows where it came from it's also the biggest rock on this island Yeah. 